Pam Marinello, and today I'd like to share with you St. Maximilian Kolbe. His feast day is August 14th, and he is the patron saint of drug addicts, prisoners, families, and the pro-life movement. He's often depicted in his pictures as wearing a prison uniform with a needle being injected into his arm. St. Maximilian Kolbe was born as Raymond Kolbe on January 8th of 1894 in the Kingdom of Poland, which was part of the Russian Empire at the time. Much of his life was strongly influenced by the vision he had of the Virgin Mary when he was 12 years old. He recalled, that night I asked the Mother of God, what was to become of me? Then she came to me holding two crowns, one white and the other red. She asked me if I was willing to accept either of the crowns. The white one meant that I, would, I should persevere in purity and the red that I would become a martyr. I said that I would accept both. The year after this vision, Colby and his older brother joined the conventional Franciscans in 1910. He was given the religious name of Maximilian at that time. And since he especially loved the Virgin Mary, he adopted the additional name of Mary when he pronounced his solemn vows. Father Maximilian Mary Colby is known as the Apostle of Consecration of Mary. He founded the Militia of Mary Immaculate after witnessing demonstrations against two popes. He felt the world of the 20th century needed the Heavenly Mother to guide and protect them and asked for her to intercede for the conversion of sinners and enemies of the Catholic Church. Father Colby was ordained a priest in Rome in 1918 and continued his work of promoting Mary throughout Poland. While teaching at the Krakow Seminary, he suffered from tuberculosis and took a two-year leave of absence. Father Maximilian Kolbe and his fellow Franciscans published newsletters each month called The Night of the Immaculate that went out to readers around the world. Our Mother Mary blessed Father Kolbe's work, which allowed him to build a large center in Poland called the City of the Immaculate. Eventually, 800 Franciscans lived there and worked to make Mary's love known worldwide. He later founded monasteries in Japan and India, and today the monastery in Japan is very prominent in the Roman Catholic Church. When he went back to Poland in 1939, World War II broke out, and Father Kolbe was one of the few friars remaining at the monastery, so he organized it into a temporary hospital. When the, ho the Polish town of Immaculate was captured by the Germans, uh, they arrested Father Kolbe, but released him three months later. He continued then at that time working at the friary by providing shelter to the refugees of Poland, and that also included 2,000 Jews that he hid from German persecution. The monastery continued to publish religious articles and issued many anti-Nazi publications. In February of 1941, the monastery was shut down and Father Colby was arrested again and taken to prison in Warsaw. But three months later, they transferred him and 250 other prisoners to Auschwitz. While Father Colby was in Auschwitz, he and other priest prisoners were singled out to do hard manual labor and were beaten. But he reassured them that the Nazis will not kill our souls, and when we die, then we die pure and peaceful, resigned to God in our hearts. In August of 41, one of the prisoners escaped Auschwitz, and in re retaliation, the Nazis made the rest of the prisoners pay for his action. They selected 10 men who were going to die of starvation in the starvation bunker. Uh, Francis was a Polish soldier who was married with a family, and he pleaded to be spared 
for the sake of his children. Father Colby felt deeply moved to help Francis. So he spoke up and said, I am a Catholic priest from Poland. I would like to take his place because he has a wife and children. The 10 men were locked up in the starvation bunker and were deprived of all food and water. They did not cry or weep, but instead Father Colby led them through prayer, reciting the rosary and singing Marian hymns. After 14 days, Father Colby was still alive, and on August 14th of 41, he was given a lethal injection of carbolic acid. At that time, it was said that he raised his left arm and he calmly awaited his death. His remains were cremated the following day on August 15th, uh, which was also the Assumption of Mary's feast day. Father Maximilian Kolbe was beatified on October 17, 1971. The two miracles that confirmed his beatification were the cure of calcification of the arteries in one person and the cure of intestinal tuberculosis in another. Um, Francis, the man who Father Kolbe had saved in Auschwitz, survived the Holocaust with his wife and later decided to track down Father Colby's community to tell them how he had spared his life. As the church began investigating um, Maximilian Colby's life, Francis's testimony was very important in that whole process. Uh, Father Maximilian Colby was canonized by Pope John Paul II on October 10, 1982, and he was declared a, mar a martyr, not a confessor. Francis attended both of the beatification and the canonization ceremonies. Um, Francis also died in 1995, so Maximilian Kolbe basically gave him an additional 54 years of his life by um, offering to take his place in Auschwitz. The conventional Fr Franciscan friars have since founded new institutes and the missionaries of the Immaculate Mary were formed. St. Colby's apostolic mission is to bring all souls to the Sacred Heart of Christ through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Mary is Christ's most pure, efficient, and holy instrument of evangelization, especially for those who are estranged from the Catholic Church. As St. Maximilian Colby once said, Love lives through sacrifice, and it is nourished by giving. So remember, this could be you.